abseiled off the Kurugang Rail Bridge, uh, which is the access point to the Newcastle Coal Port, which is the world's largest coal port. Um, we're here as part of Blockade Australia, uh, and we're here to disrupt uh, this massive part of the Australian economy, a massive part of Australia's contribution to the climate crisis. Um, you can see Tim just over there, you can see the rail bridge, um, we're above the Hunter River. Uh, we're here on a Wabakul and Wurrumwai country, uh, sovereignty has never been ceded. Um, and yeah, the, the land that we're protecting today, uh, first of all, people have been fighting against colonial destruction to the environment and to First Nations peoples for generations, for over 250 years. Um, so yeah, we're here today stepping into that fight uh, and we're doing it in a disruptive way. We've stopped all coal trains heading into the coal port. Um, there'll be no movement along the railway line until if you're asking very loudly. Um, so yeah, here to encourage everyone to not only be loud in your dissent, but to be disruptive. Um, just take you over to Tim while I have a drink. Tricky, 
keep navigating a slippery phone and a water bottle, but there we go. Managed it. Um, so, yeah, currently Tim and I are suspended off the Kurugang Rail Bridge. Uh, it's the only access point for all of the coal trains heading into Newcastle Coalport, which is the biggest coal port in the world. Um, it's a pretty key part of Australia's role in leading the climate crisis. As we know, coal, massive contributor to climate change, fucking awful stuff. Should have stopped using it decades ago, but unfortunately, um, you know, too much, too much money in coal, too much money in other fossil fuels that Australia has uh, refused to move away from, even though the science has been very clear for a very, very long time. Um, and so I guess to me it's pretty obvious that it's not for lack of education that we have, that Australia has not moved away from fossil fuels. It's not because lack of awareness about the climate crisis. Um, the climate crisis is not a future problem, it's a right now problem. Uh, and not only is it happening right now, we also, we know, we know about it happening. We know um, the effects that rising temperature has. We know the effects that growing acidification has on the oceans. And uh, we know the impacts that extreme weather has on, on people. Um, and that's happening right now. It's definitely gonna get worse, but it is already happening. Um, so it's definitely not from a lack of knowledge or awareness about the situation we're in and so I guess I just want to ask people at home to kind of sit with that and think like okay so everyone actually knows what's going on here we know why it's happening um, we know who's benefiting from it we know who's gonna suffer from it um, which really is everyone um, obviously some people have already started to experience the effects of climate change um, that number will definitely continue to increase. Um, and so if we know all these things, I know them, you know, I'm not a fucking scientist and I know how bad the situation is. Um, you know, uh, the government knows what's going on, corporations who continue to um, propagate and invest in fossil fuels know exactly what's happening, um, you know, BP released a statement acknowledging the impacts of CO2 emissions, what, in the 90s? Um, and yeah, so everyone knows what's going on and I guess um, to me it seems pretty obvious that the only way we're going to see any real change is by being materially disruptive. Um, that means going after things that are important to the Australian operation, the Australian government, um, that's places of economic importance, political importance, um, and things that we can materially disrupt. So, um, as I said before, we're blocking the Kurugang Rail Bridge, uh, which is the only access point that coal trains have to get into the world's largest coal port. Um, and, you know, we're able to do that with two people. Um, probably could have done it with one, but you know, sometimes it's fun to have a buddy. So I'm here with Tim and um, two people still very, very slow number um, and we're able to shut down um, operations of the world's largest coal port. So yeah, I guess when we're talking about going after targets that are materially important to the Australian operation, um, it's also good to think about, you know, what can we do with a small amount of people because although there's a lot of people in Australia who, you know, are aware of climate change and probably, um, you know, maybe they'll attend a rally once, a, once in a while. Um, unfortunately, there's not as many people who will engage in disruptive tactics. Totally understand that, although it does frustrate me a lot um, because to me it's pretty obvious that that's what we need to do. Um, but anyway, acknowledging that, acknowledging that we may, as a movement, we may be a little bit understaffed, so it's very important that we choose our targets strategically, we come together um, and go after them in a way that requires, you know, a small amount of people, large amount of disruption, and I guess in that way we'll actually be able to cause sustained disruption to these places, uh, um, and I guess, yeah, 
hopefully enough um, that dealing with us is going to become a bigger issue than the benefits of continuing to go down this path of, um, you know, behind the board, cash payouts and, um, yeah, from just, I guess, like money going into pockets from big fossil fuel industry um, and I actually think that's very possible I think um, you know it's not that hard to do actions like this um, and I think that as a population you know we definitely care enough um, I think we just need to yeah I guess be honest with ourselves about what we actually need to be doing um, when we think about taking action on the climate crisis and rather than getting sad about it, rather than getting nihilistic about it, um, I guess, I, you know, asking everybody who's watching to um, get active rather than, um, yeah, rather than, I guess, waiting around to see what will happen because I think if you're if you're not doing something and you're not like actively thinking okay what is what is the best way I can actually engage with this problem then I think you may as well yeah you may as well be doing nothing um, I think we've had you know decades and decades of awareness raising um, and you know I, you know, I know about the climate crisis, so I thank the people who have come before me to educate me about the climate crisis, but I think we're at the point where we can safely say everyone fucking knows and we can stop with the awareness raising and focus our energy on disrupting the pillars of the Australian operation, um, disrupting them where it matters to them. Uh, and where we can, yeah, where we can target and go after um, with not that many numbers. So, um, yeah, just want to give, oh, I just wanted to plug uh, Blockade Australia's next event. Uh, it will be in Sydney next year in June 27. Uh, it'll be a week of disruption. Uh, and we're going to Sydney because like the Newcastle coal port, um, the functioning of Australia's largest city is obviously very important. Um, it's something that uh, the Australian government and the Australian, um, Australian businesses cannot allow to be disrupted in a sustained way. Um, and so, yeah, the reason why we're going there is to force the reactions to go after um, the central hub of economy and population. It's obviously, you know, very internationally significant and we want to make, um, yeah, I guess big disruptive splash and um, not this kind of splash. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, so just an update for people who just joined in. Um, first of all, ask everyone to please share this helps tremendously to have Facebook live shared um, share it to your friends if you've got some people who you think might share it send them a DM say hey I know you usually go on Facebook to dissociate at the end of a long day but maybe um, just this one time you could help a friend out and share their live stream because they're doing something pretty sick uh, and it's really fucking important and uh, we need more people doing it, uh, more people talking about it, more people talking about the need for being disruptive and also talking about really the position and the role that Australia is playing in the climate crisis. Um, so Tim and I are hanging off the Kurugang rail bridge, it's the only access point for the coal trains going into the world's largest coal port in Newcastle. Um, we are the fifth day of action this week. There have been multiple actions on the railway line resulting in over 25 hours of disruption um, in total. And that's happened with a pretty minimal number of arrests, which is incredible.
incredible um, and goes to show that um, these kinds of tactics um, you don't need thousands and thousands of people like we always hope when we do a rally you know if you do a rally and only 50 people show up it's a bit sad if you engage in disruptive tactics and 50 people are willing to do what I are doing then you're doing a pretty good job and I'd say the impact is yeah pretty huge um, yeah so I'm gonna have a drink of water again talking on Facebook live it's very thirsty work um, so please make it worthwhile <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Kamal. Oh, thanks, Genevieve. Um, Peter J. Tuning in too. Um, thanks, Ben. Love your work. Uh, yeah, and if you feel like it, um, feel free to send me a message on here. Um, if you have any questions or if you, yeah, just want to say hey, definitely. Um, yeah, love seeing the love, love seeing people's comments. Um, pretty lucky that I've got a friend up here with me, so not feeling too lonely, but definitely loving the friends on the live stream. Um, you know, makes it feel like there's all 35 of us here on this bridge. Oh, 36, including Tim. Um, let's try and make it 100 of us hanging off this bridge pretty fun if you're all here with me but you know through the phone I'll have to do Use to access 
the Newcastle Coal Port, which is the largest coal port in the world. Um, we're doing that. We're doing this today um, because the Australian operation that is causing the climate crisis, playing a leading role in the climate crisis, needs to be disrupted. It deserves to be disrupted. Um, I think you know there's no way that we're going to continue to let the Australian government um, and any business, any part of the operation um, that uh, is supporting this to get away with it um, because people are dying <laughs> and more people are going to die because of the impacts of climate change. more and more disgrace and I think that um, you know if you know me or you know other people in the movement who engage in direct action um, I encourage you to talk to them ask them why they do it ask them you know why why they think that you should also be out here being disruptive because yeah I have to tell you we're not just doing it for fun um, it's actually a really effective way to cause change and um, I think at this point it's pretty clear that uh, non-disruptive tactics tactics like uh, large rallies or um, awareness raising or um, you know waiting around for a climate election are definitely not gonna work um, yeah so come and join us Very windy, Peter J. It's actually quite, it's quite nice. It's nice and sunny after a whole lot of rain for the last week. Um, very grateful for the sunshine right now. Um, thanks so much for the love, everyone. Um, a few more police have arrived on site. Um, there's a police rescue truck. Two police rescue trucks. Um, Currently no other police cars that I can see. Uh, there's some police on on the on the walkway that crosses the bridge. Um, I'll show you the ropes. So yeah, um, a little while ago Tim and I uh, tied our climb line to the railway tracks. Uh, we jumped over the side of the um, walkway barrister and we abseiled down to here um, and by doing that we've blocked all access to the coal port um, and yeah it was you know maybe about 40 minutes after the, the trains just started running um, today they unfortunately couldn't run all morning because of flooding so sad um, they got to go for yeah about 45 minutes and then um, yeah and then Tim and I got in the way so um, sorry about that but also not sorry um, Predominantly. 
definitely uh, it was the most effective thing that we could think of to do um, to disrupt the Australian political and economic system. Um, it's that economic and political system that is playing a leading role in the climate crisis. Uh, it has been for years, it is known that it has been for years and it has continued to do so um, despite Let me tell you, it fucking has. Um, Australia is not immune to the impacts of climate change. Uh, I'm sure you all remember, if you weren't directly impacted, you surely saw it on the news, uh, the 2019 to 2020 bushfires. Um, pretty terrifying, uh, very recent, very of just how terrifying the climate crisis is, just how devastating it is. Um, yeah, my recollection is that it took about a dozen lives, I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, they were lives that definitely didn't have to go. Um, that summer didn't have to be that hot, the bush didn't have to be that dry. And all those things, you know, accumulating into these, you know, months and months of bushfires, that's, that's the result of inaction on climate change that's the result of you know not enough people blocking these coal trains that's the result of decades and decades of polite protest um, and yeah I think people um, hear about the impacts of climate change a lot it's definitely on you know it's on the news it's certainly been on the news this last week uh, with the COP summit happening um, and yeah so I guess I'm not going to bore you with a lot of climate facts but I think it is <clears throat> important to ground what we're doing in I guess like the way that um, the way that I've already experienced climate change um, and you know the impacts that I've seen firsthand um, and the people that I've met and how it's impacted the people that I've met um, because it is a very real problem it's a problem that is going to affect everyone it's a problem it's a problem that's already affecting so many people um, yeah and I guess the, the bushfires are one example um, I was down the south coast in the 2019-2020 bushfires um, and got to see the, um, the impact that that had on the communities down there and I guess just like being that close to bushfires is just really fucking terrifying. Um, there was one night where uh, we were prepared to leave first thing in the morning um, but we weren't sure whether that was going to be soon enough because obviously massive bushfires are extremely unpredictable um, and so some friends and I set um, a rotating alarm for all of us to wake up in 45 minute intervals throughout the night just to check on how close the fire was um, because it was, yeah, it was approaching and um, it was moving much faster than any of us thought it would, it was moving much faster than SES thought it would. Uh, and about two of those kind of alarm rotations in, uh, we saw that the fire was um, very, very close and um, we had to evacuate straight away. So at three in the morning, um, woke up some pretty terrified friends of mine, told them that we couldn't wait till morning and we had to go straight away. And um, we stepped outside that, the door and um, it was hotter than the hottest summer day I've ever experienced and it was the middle of the night. Um, it felt like opening an oven door. The sky was orange, even though again it was 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, and yeah, that was pretty terrifying. Um, and, you know, I had it pretty fucking easy. Um, I was in a safe house. I had a safe
safe place to go to. We went to the evacuation center uh, and we spent New Year's Eve sleeping in an oval. Um, yeah, and yeah, just got the cops turned talk to us. Um, definitely pretty uncomfortable, but not as uncomfortable <laughs> as that summer. Um, and yeah, not only was it scary for me at that time. Uh, six-year-old brother he was you know with my mum in Canberra at that time and the whole time you know I was just thinking what's gonna happen to them what are they gonna do if they have to evacuate um, from their home where are they gonna go are they gonna be okay you know um, it's pretty scary to think about that stuff you know not in a hypothetical not in a maybe in a few years time but this is happening right now um, that summer those bushfires happened off the back of a big year of taking climate direct action and it was a very sobering experience to be um, yeah, so materially reminded about how real the issue is um, and yeah, give you a quick update where we are and why I'm talking to you about bushfires. Um, I'm currently suspended off the Kurugang Rail Bridge. Uh, it's the only access point to the world's largest coal port um, in Newcastle. And we've upsailed off it in a way that uh, does not allow for any movement of coal trains to move along the line. Uh, yeah, and we're doing it because obviously at this point in history, in this point in the climate crisis that we're at, uh, we know that polite tactics don't work, we know that polite dissent doesn't work, we know that loud and angry dissent doesn't work. Uh, I'm sorry for everyone who goes to rallies and yells their little heart out, it's not enough. Um, the Australian economic and political system know that you're going to go home at the end of the day uh, and they're not phased by you. Um, I gotta tell you, they're fucking, they're phased by us right now. Um, if you're stopping operation of the economic system, um, you matter to them and we need to matter to be able to make a difference and that's why, yeah, that's why we're taking this action today. Um, that's why I'm here talking to you about bushfires, that's why I'm here, yeah, hanging off a rope, um, trying to ignore the cops as they talk to me. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to respond um, because I know that I'm safe um, and so long as they don't do anything I'll continue to be safe. Um, once they start interfering, who knows, but also, um, yeah, obviously the risks involved in taking direct action like this are nothing compared to the risks of uh, the climate crisis. So there's an original quote for you. How nice is it to look up and see your rescue team with guns in their pockets? Um, definitely makes me feel very safe. Um, cool. Um, yep, just a reminder for anyone <clears throat> who's watching to share this. Um, message it to your friends, message it to your family members. Say, please give this a share. It really helps um, boost it. Um, yeah, really trying to get as many people in Australia uh, engaged in this type of action. The way they're going to get engaged in it is by seeing it, is by being able to connect with people who are doing it. Um, so if anyone is interested in taking this type of action, um, <clears throat> message the Blockade Australia Facebook page. You're also welcome to message me on Facebook, um, although I will um, suss you out and make sure you're not a cop. Um, but yeah, message me, ask me how to get involved, um, and ask how to get involved in Blockade Australia's next event, which is um, next year in June for a week. Uh, we will be disrupting Australia's um, largest economic and political centre, which is Sydney. Uh, it's Australia's largest city. So many, so much like goods and labour moves through that city. Um, so many opportunities for 
disruption uh, and yeah I guess I know that um, that kind of disruption uh, will be effective in um, forcing real engagement with this issue um, you know maybe not straight away but um, yeah it's it's the definitely the path we need to go down um, we know that yeah we know that nothing else is working obviously um, because we're in this situation um, you know what number cop is it hey Tim what number cop hey Tim what number cop was it? What number cop summit was it? 26. Cop number 26! We're at cop number 26 and we're still doing cop! What the fuck? 26! <laughs> they fucking knew at the first one. They knew how bad it was um, and they continued to know. They knew and then they knew some more. Um, I'm talking about climate scientists, I'm talking about policy makers, I'm talking about anyone who um, looks at summits like COP, like, <clears throat> like things like the Paris Agreement and says, hmm, that's enough, they're dealing with the issue. Um, they're fucking not because it keeps getting worse uh, and yeah, it's fucking terrifying how many people still think that that is an okay way to engage with the problem. Um, pretty yeah it's pretty funny how much your perception of what a weird thing to do is I personally think um, a weird thing to do is to engage with something like cop uh, in a way like it's gonna create any meaningful action um, and I don't think that uh, abseiling off a rail bridge is weird so um, I don't know you'd be the judge of who the crazy person is but I reckon I'm pretty sane um, So just got some police looking over the balustrade at Tim. Um, looks like they got a helmet on. Um, got some police up on the walkway above me. There they are. Um, just told me they've got their body camera on, so maybe there'll be some more sick footage. Um, Across the river I've got, I don't know, two police rescue vans, one police car, <clears throat> a few other plane cars, um, and got some workers who are looking like they're enjoying their afternoon off. You are welcome. Um, <coughs> yeah, just got... tuned in, um, Tim and I are hanging off the Kurugang Rail Bridge. Uh, it's the only access point to the world's largest coal port, um, so no coal trains are moving today. Um, they won't be moving until both of us are safely removed, um, which will hopefully take a little while. Um, yeah, and we're here because it's absolutely necessary for this point in time people to be engaging with the problem uh, in a way that materially disrupts um, the vested interest in who's causing the problem. Um, because I think if you don't actually challenge that power, um, that power is never going to shift and we're never actually going to see real climate action um, because, yeah, because they have an invested interest in it and um, it's been going on for decades and it's not changing, it's definitely not changing fast enough, um, you know, politicians are getting slightly better at paying lip service to the climate crisis, um, but I think all of us are smart enough to be able to see through that and, um, yeah. Um, we are Day five after four other amazing days of direct action on the pole railway line. Um, depending on how long we've been here, um, maybe reaching a total of 20.
26 hours of disruption um, this week on the coal railway line. Um, and yeah, that has happened with a minimal amount of arrest. It's a very efficient way to cause um, to cause disruption. Uh, and yeah, I'm just gonna have a drink of water. materially important to the Australian operation and um, think about that as targets as well, as well as protecting um, the places that we care about, as well as protecting individual pieces of land, pieces of forest. Um, and so that's why we're here at the world's largest coal port, because it's here in Australia. Um, it's pretty embarrassing, to be honest, that, um, yeah, that Australia
since it was colonized uh, and yeah it's continued to be that um, oh, we've got a friend on the water oh not a friend it's a cop boat um, thought it might have been some supportive locals um, if, any, if any Newcastle you know locals have a boat and want to come by and say hello that'd be pretty sick um, it's a bit windy but you know it's sunny so it's really the first day after a while that you've you know that's been a good opportunity to get on the water um, don't know what they're doing um, surely there's some river crime somewhere that they could be focusing their attention on but instead they're here um, <clears throat> that's fine I'm feeling pretty good where I am um, here with Tim. Tim is from Victoria, what a legend. Um, climbed over that, rip, that walkway balustrade with me a little while ago after we both attached to the whole railway line. Um, and both our climb lines are crossing both of the rail tracks, so coal trains can't move. Australia you may not feel um, you may not feel the impacts of that just yet but I assure you um, your time will come and you will be scared and you'll be uncomfortable um, you may be displaced from your home you may not be able to get to work because of flooding um, you may lose a loved one in a bushfire the 
there's lots of different ways you can do it. Um, not everybody has to climb off a rail bridge. There's lots of different ways to be disruptive. <clears throat> um, looks like the police boat is getting pretty close. Our system is broken, time for change. Anyone who doesn't acknowledge the climate catastrophe, catastrophe is in denial. I'd actually go one step further than that, Peter J. I would say that anyone who doesn't engage in you know, meaningful action that <clears throat> they think will be effective or they think is worthwhile, anyone who doesn't engage in action that is disruptive, action that challenges the entrenched power that is causing the climate crisis is in denial. But I, because I think that to think that any other form of dissent, any other form of protest is going to do anything, I think is, I think is kind of ridiculous at this point. Um, so next time a big rally is called taking direct action, tell people about um, tell people about what you think about the position we're in and ask people what they think we really need to be doing because I think we need to be having a lot more honest conversations right now. Um, yeah, and honest conversations can be uncomfortable. Um, it's uncomfortable to challenge these, you know, um, to challenge started to do anything yet so I'm not really sure why they think they need so many police um, but you know I guess they just like standing around so whatever um, oh, so this cop has just put a line down I'm not sure what they're gonna do with it looks like a pretty nice rope though um, they could you know, quit their job and give it to me that'd be pretty pretty useful thing to do with that bit of rope. Much more useful than taking us off the line. Um, but let's try 
amazing that they're doing that, obviously, um, because we are um, disrupting private property, we're disrupting private business, um, we're disrupting, you know, a very important part of the Australian economy. Um, so they're definitely here to come and stop us from doing that. Um, but we've managed to stay here for a while, so I would say already job well done. Pretty stoked so far. Um, uh, they seem to be hassling Tim a lot more than me. Um, which
magnificence uh, and you know desperately trying to help put the coal back in the ground which is where it should be um, and should you know be very entertaining to watch so definitely go and check that out if you haven't already um, blocking the railway bridge heading into the world's largest coal port. Um, we're doing this uh, by hanging off a climb line that is tied to the railway line uh, and we have abseiled down. Um, currently the cops are checking out my rope um, oh, and there is a, also another rope on the other side of me so there's that's a police climb line. And then another police climb line. Um, their rope is much prettier than mine. Um, Wilka Kurikuda says, Love and peace, and I stand with you, Blockade Australia. And thanks for watching. Um, and. Margie saying awesome thanks we must challenge this country's agenda of extraction at all costs um, this land is thousands of living ecosystems which will thrive with First Nations care could not agree more Margie um, we've definitely um, treated this continent pretty fucking shit since um, since settlers got here and um, it was definitely not without um, lots of resistance and lots of warning from First Nations people saying this is going to come back and bite you in the ass. you can't treat the land this way, you can't just take and take and take and expect um, everything to be okay and obviously right now it's not. Um, I've uh, got someone on here telling me to cut the ropes. Um, well, it's pretty tempting, not sure if I'm brave enough to do that, but uh, maybe next time. Um, you know, I reckon that's some pretty good energy. Uh, Michael Evans, so maybe you can come and join us in Sydney. Um, and Cynthia Brand says, Love from Netherlands, love your action. Thanks so much, Cynthia. Um, yep, uh, Tim has finished his Instagram live, but if you can go on the Blockade Australia Instagram uh, and give that a share, definitely do that. Um, like us on Instagram, um, check out the Blockade Australia website, check out the event for the Sydney mobilisation next year, Blockade Australia resists climate inaction, um, share this live stream. <laughs> uh, Rachel Tischler is saying, ask him if he's joining you in protest. Do you mean the guy with the rope? Something about the way that they're all holding guns makes me doubt that they're joining me, but yeah, good to stay optimistic, I reckon. Um, oh. Mark, Mark, he's back on. <laughs> what a legend. Um, great supporter of Blockade Australia, Mark Markey. Um, uh, Miles J saying, great job so far. Oop. Coming in with the absolute killer of a pun to hang in there. I certainly will, Zelda. Thank you for the support. Um, uh, loving the actions. Oh, Danny Noonan sending us some love. We'll see you in June. Um, oh, direct action with a view. It, bloody is. It is a glorious afternoon. 
Um, the sun is shining. The tank is clean. That was for you, Mum. A little reference from your favourite movie. Um, but no, it is bloody glorious. Um, it's always nice to have a little bit of separation from you and the cops. Definitely makes the whole experience a little bit more pleasant. Um, those of you who have just signed in, um, Tim and I have climbed down off uh, the rail, the coal railway bridge, um, Hurigang Bridge. It's the only access point the coal trains have for the world's largest coal port in Australia. Um, we've been here for a little while now. Um, and we're doing this because um, we need to be materially disruptive to the Australian operation. We need to go after targets uh, that are important to the Australian political system, to the economic system. Um, we need to do things that actually matter and force a response. It's definitely not very pleasant um, having cops come and take you off um, a climb system like that. It's not very nice interacting with the cops at the best of times. Um, but it does show that what we're doing is getting in the way and is enough to force this kind of reaction. Um, we've got one, two cops climbing down. Um, looks like they're about to descend. I don't know why they're coming for me first. They could go for Tim. Tim, Tim doesn't have any battery left. Go for Tim. What are you doing? Anyway, that's fine. Quickly, give them quick, give them quick shares before they come and yank the phone out of my hand. Um, there they are. Looks like they're probably going to attach. I don't know. They're going to do something. Um, but yeah, give Blockhead Australia a share. Um, give this live stream a share. I'll see you in June next year um, to Blockade Sydney. Um, my other rope. Um, I don't know how but they're bringing water down with them um, which is kind of strange. Um, so you've got uh, someone just said cut the rope which sounds oh nope that was the that was the correct rope to cut thank you for cutting the correct rope um, yeah, here because um, any kind of process that isn't disruptive, isn't challenging entrenched power is a waste of time. And at this point in time, um, yeah, we need to be doing as much as possible. If that means hanging off a rail bridge across a big fast flowing river, so be it. Um, but. I'm happy to take this kind of action and I hope that others do too. Just getting lowered to the cop boat. There's the other view.